Welcome to Cult Fans Live, Episode 5. Hey, that rhymed. Today's guest is unique in her ability to tell us about the turning gears that makes the Outpost tick. Producer Jennifer Griffin not only produces for the Outpost, but for many related works by Aerostorm Entertainment, including Dawn of the Dragon Slayer, Saga Curse of Shadow, The Crown and the Dragon, The Paladin Cycle, Dragon Fire, The Christmas Dragon, the Mythica series, and many more. So stay tuned and listen in on how the Outpost makes it from people dancing in front of a camera to your local glowing box. Here we go. Hi guys, welcome to Cult Fans. I'm Minerva. We have Stacy right here. There, Shay, but let's be real. Everyone's here for Jennifer Griffin, mother of a daughter that wishes mom had a normal job, producer at Aerostorm Entertainment, and she graduated from serving her early sentence in the art department. How are you doing, Jennifer? I'm really great. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. I'm I'm very, very excited to talk to you and, and our other fans that we have out there who are watching. So I'm I'm just really excited to get to it. And uh, I, I couldn't be more grateful. Okay. Okay, totally important questions first. On a scale of one to dragon, how much do you like dragons? Um, let's just say I think I think the last 15 years of my life have centered around dragons and and lots of other mythical crazy creatures and creations. So so I'm pretty up there. I you know, there's probably not many people who are much crazier about dragons than us at Aerostorm and, and uh, me personally. So Wanda Dragon is like dragon. Okay. <laughs> on a scale of, okay. So no, but actually like being serious here, you're a producer now, kind of curse of knowledge a bit here, but that's actually a heck of a job. Now, when people watch a show, they don't really like think about the organization and everything that goes into making it. So would you mind like taking a couple of minutes to tell an audience what a producer does and maybe more explicitly like a day in the work life of a Jennifer? Um, sure. And, and do you know what, actually Minerva, you can step in here too, or any of you other ladies, <laughs> you're, you're producing things as well. Um, one of the one of the crazy things about being a producer is there's kind of actually a few different kinds of producers, and so um, you know there's executive producers and associate producers and all all sorts of. And I have a co-producer, so there's a lot of different varieties of producers. But for me specifically, I am Aerostorms. Basically, I'm their set producer. So. You know, I'm with Kynan and Jason, who are essentially Aerostorm's bones, and um, they own the company, and I work for them, and uh, I make sure they come up with a concept of a show or a movie, and they write the script, and then they say, okay, are you ready? And I say, great, give it to me, let's go. And so from there, I take it from there, and uh, you know, I do budgeting with them, and then I do all the hiring of the crew, and making sure that the the money's flowing. So I'm a little bit different from crazy big time producers and the fact that um, they'll have much more, you know, specific jobs that they do production wise, whereas mine kind of encompasses the whole aspect from beginning of concept to to the end finished product. But mainly my job focuses on the getting everything ramped up and doing the production and then wrapping it out and then kind and kind of actually not even kind of kind and really takes over the um post production of it all so i don't i don't know a whole lot about post i know a bit about post but i i stay in there you know through through the end of all of it with them but i really do the everyday set goings ons and um making sure that people are here when they're supposed to be here we have everything we need if we don't have it, how are we going to solve it? How are we going to solve it budgetary wise? People come and ask me, you know, I need X, Y, and Z to make this next thing happen. And I say, you can have X and Y, but you can't have Z or, you know, I'm, I'm really the person that everybody on set answers to. And then I answer to Jason and Kynan. Mm -hmm. Sometimes and sometimes you kind of got to do the big bad witch. You can have this and this, but you can't have this piece of candy. <laughs> so true. It's so true. Um, now, kind of speaking of budget and 
figuring it out. Um, Aerostorm is a pretty unique beast of its own among production, I guess you would say. Um, it pulls off these giant visions with, I mean, you're honestly not a big budget studio, but I mean, how, you manage to make it work in a way that it doesn't come across like a B movie or what have you. It's, it's honestly impressive. So how was working on like a crowdfund startup, like Mythica different in process from a bigger budget movie? Do you all have like a hat rack of your own? Like the, I, I do all of these things and who all should we give a bow to for kind of multi-classing? Um, that's a really great question, actually. So I have an unbelievable team of people that, you know, we we constantly hire on and work with continually. And um, so those those people, as soon as you find somebody good, you know, you, you never let them go. You just try and keep them forever. So um, some of those people are Lauren Spaulding, our production designer is is unbelievable she and she works herself to the bone I mean it's crazy the hours that woman pulls she's absolutely amazing and then her art director is uh Kurt Knight but also he directed uh episodes three two and three of the outpost and um they're just this amazing team that you can always count on and um, so when you find these kinds of people that that do it all, that will, you know, basically it's like, who's going to bleed, for, who's going to once again bleed for me for this budget? I, I know who to call. A, a few of those other names are David Powell. He's absolutely unbelievably amazing, designed and made all this, the armor that you see. He's, he's absolutely mind-blowing in his designs and what he comes up with and can make look amazing for you know not not what you, not iron man budgets at all and uh then we have emily jacobson she's our costume designer she's she's fantastic as well and she's the same thing you know she's willing to like this is her this is her life she loves it she loves creating characters and costumes for those characters to tell the story and she's another one that we hold on to i i mean i just have such a an array of people one of my um there's actually my co-producer justin partridge i worked with him years ago and then he ran away to la and got his master's degree but then i persuaded him to come back for the outpost and he's i i don't actually think i could have made outpost happen without him i couldn't have made it happen without you know any of these wonderful people but he he was paramount for keeping me at <laughs> sane and being a backup and then you know, of course, Jason and Kynan are, you know, it's, it's their work, it's their creative dream. And, you know, you make these dreams come to life and you think, you know, partway down the road, sometimes you, you lose your, your steam or your vision and you're like, why am I here? And then, you know, everybody comes together and helps you re, you know, get reinvigorated for the process. And it's an amazing one. I, I honestly, this is turning into some bizarre Oscar speech, but I have so many people <laughs> that, that I can name for you. And and the actors go along with that also. You know, it's like Jake has worked with us on Mythica and then he did appearance and he's just one of those steady, steady people you can count on. And and um, so is our, the, the guy who plays Mun, Adam Johnson. He's right in there. I love using Adam all the time because I know he'll, He'll come, he'll do a good job. He loves it. He loves working. He loves, you know, working in fantasy. And he, you really have to find those people that love the genre that you're in. And um, fantasy is a special one because you have to take it seriously. And a lot of people don't. And when you don't take it seriously for what it is, it, it doesn't turn out so well. So I think one of those things is that everybody who's in this loves the genre and they love working together, and that really just makes for for a great end product. Okay. Okay. Well, well. Echoed. Echoed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I know Stacy actually wanted to explore some of your other work with the crew, but real quick before I kind of pass you on to that, um, I wanted to explore a couple of other things that our viewers might not know about that you've worked on recently. Like there was the appearance. Um, mm -hmm. Now. <clears throat> For our viewers, it's circulating film festivals right now, correct? It is, yeah. It was in Chicago 
I can't remember the name of that festival. And then it's in one here in Utah this weekend called Film Quest, and it's making its rounds, and you know, it's got distribution, and it will be out in a little bit. So it's it's a it's this fun film that we did that it's actually kind of a bit of a departure from the other things that we've done. Uh, um, it, if I mind film. inserting real quick, I noticed you actually use some very similar set pieces to what we even see on the outpost, but despite these familiar elements, it is completely divided off, like the feeling. So I was kind of wondering like how y'all were feeling in doing that. Um I think that it was one of those things that we we don't we don't traditionally make any sort of like um hor horror films we never make or but thrillers you know we're all very interested in but it's one of those things that for us it has to be done correctly and delicately and you know cuz it's just you know, thrillers, anybody who's a fan of like horror or thrillers, you, you need to really get those things right. Like you do like fantasy. So we were like, you know, what's, what's this interesting concept? What's something fun that we could do while, you know, while we are waiting for outpost basically to start, we decided, Hey, let's, let's make a movie. Let's do it. And so we did. And, and Lauren designed that one and Kurt uh, Knight directed it. And it's a, it's a fun movie. It's a, it's a good thriller. It's a good fun thriller. Okay, like, I, I just wanted to say, I wanted to give accolades because I noticed, like I said, there's familiar faces, there's familiar even set, I guess you'd say, but it, it's so, even in a few minutes, it has your skin crawling with a completely different vibe. So props to everyone working on that one. I just wanted to get that out there. Thank um, you. But I should probably stop myself here or I'm just going to be like dying to talk like nerdy production shop talk all day that'll bore people to death. So instead, I'm going to pass you over to Stacy so she can get to digging on the outpost and the crew and everything pretty deeply here. Sounds great. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, man. Hi there, Jennifer. Hi, Stacy. How are you doing? Good. It's great yeah. to have you. Um, hey. we we continue to hear about the family environment on the set from a lot of our guests. But I think you might be the one to ask how you cultivate such a pleasant environment. Is it the people that you hire? Do you look for a certain quality in them, uh, even past their acting? Is it something the execs do to keep the place happy? Or what do you I think that we have really, really strived over the years. It's been one of those things for us that we want to create um, an environment where people come to work and, and film is notoriously abusive, you know, with the hours and the physicality of it and what has to go on. And we're no different in that, that, you know, our hours sometimes are unbelievably long. And, you know, sometimes I personally have, you know, had to sleep in my office overnight just so, you know, just so I can keep the next day rolling. But it's like, it's, it's one of those things you try and hire people who, um, first of all, I try not to abuse that in people. That's something I really strive towards that we're not abusing the crew, that we're not, if it's not absolutely necessary, then we're not going over time. You know, it's not one of those things where I, I just let, I just let the production continue because I think, hey, maybe maybe we can just get these few more shots or add this other scene and really be ahead and, you know, um, save this little bit of money. You know, there's there's no way of trying to really explain to somebody, you know, a happy crew is worth far more for you uh, financially than catching, you know, another half an hour or hour of filming because they're going to go home. They're going to see their families. They're going to look at their bank statements. They're going to go to the bathroom and take a shower. And then they're going to come back and they're going to be happy. You know, they get to go home and they get to do all of their personal things that they need to do and be away from you. And then they get to come back and be excited again. And I, and I really try and cultivate that in a crew that they get to go home and that they get to come back so that they feel like, okay, I'm still here. I'm still ready to work. It's it's not some crazy abusive environment. And, and there are a lot of crews that, you know, um, departments within film that you have a real tendency to abuse them, which is, 
you know, the art department's a big one for that because they, they could actually run 24 hours a day, nonstop seven days a week. And that's, that's not an exaggeration. And they would still probably feel like they're behind, but you know, Lauren, our production designers great about that. Also your makeup crew, they can really be severely abused and nobody really thinks about that. You know, sometimes they'll get pre-calls like four and five hours before your 12 hour shooting day. So you have to, you have to, we have to be sensitive to those things. And I try to do that. I don't know. Maybe you'll talk to some of the crew and they'll disagree with me and say that I was abusive. I hope not. But um, that's one of the things that I really try and show them. Like, I care about you. I care about your life. I know that this, this is not hundred percent of your life, even if you love it. So I really hope that that's, that's something I do, but also with the, with the actors, the actors are, um, you know, they're creative people just like my crew and it's the same for them. It's, it's trying not to bring them to set and make them sit around all day long and get in their costume or their wardrobe or sit in makeup for four hours. And then, you know, you never use them. And that's something you hear a lot about on TV shows or big budget movies. Like they just call in the actors and they sit and that can be, you know, kind of, morale deteriorating a little bit so right. um, that's another something I try not to do I try to really keep people here for when when they need to be here for when they want to work and then they work and then you know they're they're free to go home and and have their you know have the rest of their lives but I really hope that that is something that I'm achieving I I know I'm not all the way there and I really need to be better at it and I definitely am striving towards that for every single project that I do. Um, On, you mentioned, you mentioned that you discussed the outpost. outpost. I'm echoing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely make it a point to bring in new blood and give new chances to a lot of people you, you work with and have had a lot of the same faces uh, in your past features. Uh, people like Philip Brody, who played Dread, um, of course, Jake Storm on and uh, Adam Johnson, to name a few. Um, I know Melanie has been in a bunch of your stuff, too. Um, is what type of script is 